Do you want to add the ability to search for YouTube videos in your Bubble app or tenor GIFs? Or would you like to be able to add events to a calendar from the Google API services? What do all of these things have in common? Well, if you want to do any of them, you're going to need to be able to set up Google's OAuth 2.0 authentication method to be able to use their APIs. In this video, you're going to learn just that. So to kick things off in this video, what we're going to do to learn how to do Google's OAuth 2.0 uh, is head over to consolecloud.google.com and just go ahead and make a project. Um, I'll just call this one the API tutorial. And why stick around for this video? Well, um, like I said in the introduction, there are a ton of APIs. Uh, I opened up a few of them here. And so on here on the left, there is, you know, all of the APIs Google offers, which there are hundreds. And you can see some common ones in here, Google Drive, Google Sheets, Google Calendar, uh, Google's Cloud Speech to Text API, YouTube's Data API, uh, Analytics API, all of these things. Perhaps you're building uh, something with uh, a dashboard that um, allows people to pull in their YouTube metrics. Whatever it is that you're doing, you are going to need, in order to use one of these APIs, you're going to need to learn how to set up the credentials for some. So let's get started by heading over. Once you, let, let's see, for this tutorial, what I'm gonna do, because it requires this thing called a scope, we're gonna look at one, the setup in here, and then two, how to basically do the authorization Author, yeah, that's the word, authorization over in Bubble. That that will be it for this video. It'll take about 10 minutes and let's get started. So what I'm gonna do in this API tutorial is I am going to turn on an API by heading over here. So the APIs that I wanna use, let's say I'm gonna go for the calendar one. Now actually, I think that the tenor one is a little bit more fun than any of the other ones. So we'll just go over here and we'll enable it. Although I will show off briefly, let's double check that that was enabled. Nope, gotta wait. This is about um, just learning how to do something where you can eventually uh, know that for your bubble app, if you ever want to connect it to a Google, one of the Google services that's over at console.cloud.google.com, and there are many, uh, let's see. Okay, that's why I'm in a different project. So for this project, we've got this one set up. Cool. Um, now let's go to, and actually let's do one more. Just to cover my bases because I think that, uh, I know that there's this thing called a scope, which uh, I know where what it is for this Google Calendar API, but I haven't tried it for the tenor one. So I just wanna make sure I can do that. Okay, so we can see here that we have options to make AI API keys or this OAuth 2.0 client IDs. We're gonna to wanna to do that OAuth 2.0 stuff. And the first thing to do for that actually is this OAuth consent agreement. So we're gonna select external here, and then we're just gonna give it uh, the API test app. For the support email, we'll just use the account for this particular Google account. So the app domain uh, and authorized domains. So let's see what we've got here. Just gonna preview this. So this happens to be in this, uh, So we'll say that. So authorized domain, and we'll go with that. Okay. And you'll wanna have maybe your bubble one or, okay. So that looks like it takes in there. And then lastly, the contact information will fill in. Can I copy this? Maybe from here.
Okay, and then so this thing for scopes, let me head over to this tenor one and see if I can find a scope. So what a scope is, it just means what part of the API are you using because these APIs have a bunch of different parts and Google wants you to connect to, so we're gonna look for a scope here. Okay, and so Tenor is actually a pretty simple API and what I'm gonna do is head over to this calendar one. So a lot of Google's ones, YouTube included, calendar, and other many others actually, because there's so uh, wide a variety of things that you could do. So here we can see all of the different things related. This is the Google Calendar API and all the types of things. So we have this thing called events and insert, which is, you know, it inserts an event onto somebody's calendar, right? And it, it tells you at the top what it creates and then it tells you the different scopes. So basically we're just gonna go and we're gonna add this scope here. Now, if we were to do the tenor one, so we're gonna say add or remove scopes, so we're gonna search for this one and then we're just gonna add it. Now, I'm also gonna look for, let's like look at a different one. Oh, you know what, in order for it to show up here, we have to we have to have that installed. But it's basically gonna show, out of all the APIs you have installed here, you go find the scope for the part of the API that you wanna use. So I wanna use this, you know, be able to view and add at events on calendars. Um, just to show an example here. And then, so test users, so I'm just gonna go and add this test user here, save and continue. This is basically a review screen, and then so we'll say we're good to go. So we've created an OAuth consent screen, and what, what this will actually show, it'll show the person that, hey, if you're agreeing to this, just the normal Google account login thing, then, um, you know, it, it will show them what they're agreeing to. Uh, so you saw here, I said, click create. I clicked create credentials, uh, OAuth client ID, and here we're gonna go with web application because we're using a bubble app. And then for the authorized redirect URIs, what you want to have happen here is a page in your bubble app so I'm gonna go with this one that I've already, like I just set up and we'll see this page here, this Google API one. It is just a blank page with nothing on it. And so, but this is, and then I'm gonna add the, the live version as well. So when I add these here, it will, great, woohoo. Uh, so let's see, I do want to take note of these. This is my client ID that'll reset after this video. And my client secret. Just so I remember. And okay, so that we've what we've done here is we've set up all of our stuff over in this area. And then now we can head over to this page, which is we're just gonna put a button here, and that's it. A sweet red button. And we're gonna say, authorize with Google. And when we click this button, we're going to do a navigation, open in an external website. And shout out to Jacob, who is out there on the YouTube channels. Uh, he had a great off video that, um, helped me out a ton when I was setting up the YouTube API for a project. And what, what you'll wanna do here is that to head out, and this is actually pretty similar for, um, it was Spotify in that world uh, of that video, and I thought I would do another one because the Google stuff is so popular, and um, it's just nice to follow something step-by-step -step that shows you what you need to do. Uh, as well as that way we can, you know, this is the first of a series where we'll actually get into using some of the Google APIs uh, as part of the series. So one of the things that we're gonna do next is we're gonna fill out this URL. So basically we start off with this and this page, um, it's not gonna do anything until we have some URL parameters, but it's the, it's the one that everyone knows and loves. So first and foremost, we're gonna say what's the URL, UR, the redirect URI. And we're gonna fill in a value for that. 
And the URL redirect URI we're going to use is this for starters. And then note the syntax I'm using. So redirect URI, that is the, so I'm working with query string parameters. I'm sure anyone seeing this video is uh, very familiar with these. Uh, if you're not, check out a video that I have on the channel related to query string parameters and understanding those. But basically we're just gonna fill out these key value pairs um, using the common URL syntax. So redirect URI. The next thing is the prompt. I think we might be able to do it without this one, um, but we're gonna just do that anyways from some of my testing. The response type code, and this is a w important thing to note, is that we're getting back this code, and then we're gonna take this code that, hey, someone has chosen to allow us to get stuff from their uh, account on their behalf, and we'll take that code, we'll exchange it for an access token, which we give to the API when we actually go and make calls. So. We've got this client ID here, which we pulled from our account. So this identifies that when somebody is going into the Google login area, that they're doing it with our Google uh, account. And then last but not least, the scope. And the scope was what I mentioned here for this. So we'll just grab this actual scope and then we'll pop it in here. Cool. All right, so now we can just preview this. And we're gonna say authorize with Google. And so here we can see this, uh, it's saying continue to, uh, because the account that I have this set up on, uh, under in my Google account is nocodeacademy.co. Now we're gonna log in with this account. And Google hasn't verified this app, which just means because we're just doing this as testing sake, you'll actually have to work through some verification things when you wanna make an app live. But this video, the purpose of it is to get you going. And so it's saying, we can see here, because this is the scope that I added, this can view and add events to your calendars. Notice there's nothing about YouTube here, or there's nothing about Google Sheets or Google Drive, right? If you were using a different scope, or if you wanted to use a different API, you would be putting that scope back over in the place where we saw, if we were to do, 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 back on the OAuth screen, here, under scopes. So just to tie that off. Cool. Uh, so now we're over here and we're gonna say continue. And then note that it sent me back to the da, 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 da. was it this one? No. Uh, well anyways, back when we were making those credentials, if you recall, yeah, so these redirect URIs, which the, the URI, one of, at least one of your you'd redirect URIs here has to match what you put here because then when Google has verified it, it sends it back with this code and it tells us this is the scope that we're using it for, so that's cool. Thanks, Google. Then I'm gonna take everything from that uh, ampersand up to this part. And so I've got a code now. And so with this code, I can do the next part of the authorization. So let's go and handle that now over in the plugins area for, and then go to the API connector. We're gonna say add another API. And here we're gonna say Google Calendar API connection. Really we could call this just like a Google API uh, authorization because this is the one, this is the actual call, which we'll expand this out. And we're gonna be doing a post. And I've got some of my notes here, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a token. So we're heading to this URL with this set as an action, JSON post, and then we are going to add a header and in that header, we're going to mention content type this here. And then uh, just leave the body type as JSON. And then just as this, go ahead and we're just gonna pop in each of these consecutively. So starting with this, the client ID, we have that and that is this value here. 
And again, I'm going pretty fast. I'm not doing a ton of explanation on this one. But again, the, the reason for that is just that, look, if you're looking to use any of the Google APIs connected with Bubble, these are the steps you take to get just to the point where um, you can, well, actually in this one, you, you will be, let's see. Now this is to get a token. But um, but um, yeah, this is not that that one. We'd actually put this in an, in the next call. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, we'll do that after. Uh, in in a different. There we go. That's the one. This one is Google. Google Exchange code for access token API call. Okay, so now we need this client secret. Next up, the redirect URI, which once again, we're just gonna use this. Grant type authorization code, because that's the thing that we want to get back. This is all all the stuff that we're doing, we're doing to get this authorization code, which we'll see, and then we'll say the code equals, and that code is code. So uh, what, what we'll actually end up doing is we'll, as you saw there, we had this in a get query string parameter there, or we had this in a query string parameter. We'll run the get query string parameter and we'll actually insert that into a workflow and then we'll put it into this value here. But what we did with that code, this was the code that we pulled from there. And the code is good for, um, for getting you an access token. So we're gonna initialize this call and the OAuth client was not found. Cool, so what did we do wrong? Ah, yes, I actually added this uh, when I was grabbing the secret. That's what it was. I have this, you can see this G-O-C-S-P-X. I added that twice. That was my error. So we have the client ID is this up to the dot com. And then the secret is this go HJF. Okay, so let's give this another try. Okay, cool, so we see that it ran, and we now have this access token. And this access token is then, so we'll hit save, what we would put in this next part. So in this next part, we'd have this header, we'd have authorization, and we'd say bearer, and we take this access token, we'll put it in there. And then now, we would actually be able to, we're not gonna show this in this video, but we would be able to go over to, this is the uh, request for adding something to the calendar API. So we would say post, and then we would fill out some stuff and we would add an event to somebody's calendar. Whoever whoever signed in during that, you know, I approve you, Google, to do whatever you're gonna do process, um, that would end up here. We're gonna do that in another video, but basically at this point in time, by running this stuff, and since this is dynamic, we can pull this down off the URL, feed it into this workflow action, get a uh, code here, uh, authorization code, or access token rather, uh, is the specific language, and then we would be able to make a call to any of the Google Services API, all of them, all the hundreds of the APIs that are over here uh, in the API library. So if you like this video, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel for more tips where you'll also be able to get notified of when more Google API videos come out so you can use your access tokens and just, you know, uh, have some creative ideas flowing for how you could use Google's different API tools in your apps. Thanks for watching.